Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from me. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about creating custom hooks in Context API with React.js. If you follow through my previous video where I discussed about getting started with Context API and how to use it to manage global states in React.js, you would see us setting up Context API there and that is where we built this. In today's video, I'm going to be tweaking that thing we built in the last video a little bit by creating custom hooks to handle, you know, uh, some parts of things that we were repeating in this application anywhere we wanted to use it. So first of all, let's look at what we created the previous time right now. We created an application that could toggle between the light mode and the dark mode and back to the light mode again if needed. Yeah, so it's simply toggling the state of this application from a general context or a general state, and it's able to affect everywhere with just changing the state in one place. In today's video, let us just go ahead to start talking about uh, creating custom hooks and what they would actually do for us. To get started, let's look at what custom hooks are a little bit. So what is custom hook according to the React.js documentation? It says that hooks are a new addition in React 16.8. They let you use states and other React features without writing a class. Building your own hooks lets you extract component logic into reusable functions. So we are going to create reusable functions that we would have otherwise created in multiple places, which performs the same thing. So let's go ahead in our code and I'll show you what we are about to change into hooks in our context API. First, let me switch to this tab back and then go back to my editor. So right now, if you go to somewhere like the home page after doing everything we had to do for context API to set it up, you see that when we want to use our context API here, we have to import the use context here we have to also import the general context here. And then we come down here, we have to say use context and passing the general context inside of here. Then we could destructure the values out of here and use it in our application. Same thing for the button component. So if we go to the button component where we are, you know, adding the colors and all of that to the buttons, you see that we also had to bring in the use context here. We have to bring in the general context here and we had to pass it into this place. So everywhere we are going to use our global context, we have to keep repeating these steps of passing in these things and you know using them here. What if we could do them in one place, create it as a hook, and then use the hook multiple times in different components? For me, that would be great. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Now, I'm not talking, I'm not saying that doing it this way isn't cool enough because I use it this way in some projects and it's going really smoothly but I felt I could show you how to use it in a way I think sometimes it looks more concise and all of that. So let's get started with it. First, this isn't really going to be a complex tutorial and wouldn't take much time. So let's get started with it and create our custom hook really quickly. To do that, we've gone into the general context file where we declared or where we first initialized and created our context with the create context hook. Now, we could do this from any other file we decide to, but I think doing it in this file makes more sense for me because I already have the general context here and I don't have to import any other thing. So the only thing we are going to bring inside of here is the use context because we want to now perform everything from here. If you notice, I'm using tab nine also, a great auto completion tool. If you've not watched the tutorial I made on tab nine, I will link it also maybe above or somewhere even if I don't link it, it's in my, it's among the videos I've created. Go watch tab nine, get started with tab nine, next level of AI auto completion, and you would love it. So let's go ahead to create our general context hook. So the thing I want to do here, I'll just say use general context. So use general context. Let me use general context. And inside of here, this is simply going to be a function. Remember, hooks are functions that are used to wrap a piece of code uh, to make it reusable in different places, basically. So inside of here, I could just now call const and the destructured object right here, and I'll say use context. And the particular context I want to use is the general context right here. 
So I could simply come here and say return, and I could ret and I would return an object, and this object will be containing values from here, the structured values from here. So let's get those values quickly. These were the values I exported from here. So I'm just going to copy them right now, and I'll put them inside of here. Yeah, let me give my spacings right because I like saying it with the spacings better. And now I could simply come inside of here and say, is dark mode activated? Uh, I could say toggle hook state. Yeah, and I could say general app colors. Okay, yeah, autocomplete, that is best. Okay, so let's save this right now. Oh yeah, I forgot to export this. So I just want to export this directly because I already have something exported as the default here, which I don't want to change. So right now, we have exported the general, use general context from here. And this was really simple to write and didn't take much lines of code. But yeah, we have everything sorted out in just this little function. So let's recap. We created a function and inside of this function, we called what we were using multiple times here inside of it. And then we returned the values in a return statement as an object. So what we could simply do is that we could go to anywhere else we were using this use context hook, like the landing page. And now I don't need this anymore because I don't need to import this. I don't need this, but since the value is also inside of it. Oh, sorry. What did I just do? <laughs> Let me see. Okay, okay. I mistakenly pressed something on my keyboard. So let's go back here. I don't need this also right here, but I just need the use context hook use general context hook, which I exported out of it. Yeah. And right now I could just come here and say, use general context like this. And I would leave this exactly the way it is. So use general context is returning to me a, is returning, you know, an object to me. And I just want to destructure that object out of this place. So remember when you're using the use context hook, remember to always start the name with the use keyword. So use general context, use a lot. You know, you could just create context for different things depending on what you're working on, right? And right now we don't need to change any other thing here and this would work fine. We could save this right now and go to the button components and we could do the same thing. First, we can remove this from here because we don't need it anymore. And here we'll just remove this name and what we want is the use general context. And right now we could just take this out and we can say use general context, okay? Like this, this is everything. Let's save and let's go back to our browser and test this out. Okay, so it says general context is not defined. General context is not defined. Okay, so this is in general context.js. Oh, okay, let's, let's see what the problem is there. General context.js. Okay. Oh, yeah, we removed the const here by mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sorry about that. Okay, so our app works now. And let's check if the functionalities are still working. We click dark mode, we click, is that light mode back? We click dark mode and is that light mode back again? Yeah, so right now the functionalities are still working and is able to toggle. But let's go back here because I still want to do a little tweak to this. Let's say we want to export all the values inside of the general reducer, you know, value attribute thing and we don't want to bring them in one after the other like this we just want everything at once if you use javascript and if you've used react for a while you would know that this is pretty easy to do so we could just say all general context values uh, let me change that to values yeah like this Oops, this is not supposed to be here and inside of here, we could just destructure that statement. And let's say put these three dots and we'll say all general context values like this. And this is everything we need to do. 
let's go back to our browser and see if this still works. So let's refresh this and click on this, it's still toggling. So you see the functionalities didn't change, we just changed the way we used it. So every file we want to work with this now, we could just use it the same way and it would work. We don't need to import use context again. We don't need to import you know, the general context thing again. We just need to import the hook we made, use general context, we, and you know, we could just destructure our object out of it. So let us look at, before, before we wrap this up, because we are done with everything that we are doing here, let's just look at the example they had on you know, the React documentation for creating custom hooks because custom hooks could cut across different places in the application and it doesn't really have to be about context API. So here they are trying to create they are they are trying to create an example where you're able to check if a friend is online or if a friend is offline. So what it simply does is that there's a state here which is is offline, sorry is online and set is online. And then in this function when this chat API subscribe thing is called, it handles the status change, which is declared above, and is online is changed to true, right? And then in the cleanup function right here, I will link my article where I talked about cleanup functions and what cleanup functions are, how to get started with cleanup function. But basically, cleanup functions run when the page is being unloaded, right? When the page is being unmounted. Right, and the use effect runs when the state is being mounted. So yeah, that's just it. So in the cleanup function right here, is on subscribing from this action, and it's calling the handle status change again, which would now set it back to false. So this they needed this here, but they needed this functionality to check if the friend if a friend is online or if the friend is offline. They needed it in several places, and I'm not going to read through everything here. Right, you could go to the documentation for custom hooks and you could see this example. But I just felt like talking about it a bit. So what it did is down here, you would see that they extracted it out into a function of its own, which is the use friend status function, which takes in a friend ID to know the friend you're referring to. And you see that they also have the state declared here and the use effect declared here. The only difference right now is that, oops, <laughs> The only difference right now is that we are simply checking the online, we are simply returning the online status here of true or of false. So if we go down in our application, yeah, if we go down in this application, we see where the friend status hook is being used right here. So use friend status and we're passing the friend ID here. And this simply says true or false. This is like just checking if the friend is online or not, right? This is also calling the function for us in this place. So here, they could simply just use it and say it's online equal to now do this, or if the user is online, say online or offline. And in every other place they want to check the user status, they could simply just use the use friend status hook instead of calling the use effect again and doing everything from scratch. Yeah, that's it for the use effect hook. That's it for, sorry, that's it for, um, creating custom hooks in React, in React.js. And see you in another video. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Share this video with friends you think would be interested. And follow me on my social media platforms. I really appreciate all the support I'm getting. And I would love to make more tutorials for you guys in the future. Bye.